<laughs> Mike's Daily Podcast. Hey, hey, welcome. FF episode 1594. By the way, I did a super secret Sunday show yesterday for Easter's. We talked a little bit about Nacho Libre. We talked about other things. Check it out if you would like. Mike's Daily Podcast.com. The website that I've just recently renewed. That I just put money into it yet again, even though I don't make any money off the show. Mike's Daily Podcast. But I don't care. It's not about the money. Uh, Valentino, Madame Rutabaga. Mike's Daily Podcast. And Bison Bentley are stopping by. Let's sing a song about Alina Polyakova. She is so beautiful. She's like a supernova. She's from Brookings Institute. And she looks really young. What's she doing on C-SPAN at 5.31? I think she's talking about something that's really smart. Mike's Daily Podcast. I can tell because she's got glasses on. And she's really young. What is she? Gosh, she's brilliant and beautiful. Mike's. Oh, she's talking about Syria. Daily oh. Podcast. And Russia. Yeah. Okay. I think I'm out of my league here. I don't know what. What? So, I talked about Albert. Did I talk about Albert on my show before? Yes. Albert is someone that I sometimes see as I am walking Basil the Boxer. <laughs> His house is on this trail that Basil and I walk on often. By the way, look who just walked in. It was a huge day, Friday, when we went to Monterey and Carmel. I mean, Basil did a lot of walking. We were on the beach of Monterey. We were on the Carmel Beach. We walked around Cannery Row. It was, he, yeah, We walked around Morgan Hill. Morgan Hill is this halfway point between my house and Monterey. Look who else walked in. I hate being interrupted, don't you? I hate it. People open doors. You know what I hate the worst is people the most is people that cough while you're talking to them. Or clear their throat. Or you know come- Hold it until I'm done saying my thing. Right? Don't you have that? Right? Right? Am I right? Uh, and people that say right That's annoying Right? Right? God Or the originator of saying the word right Right Yeah And here's today's podcast picture All these interruptions All of them Gosh, it's like it's my own podcast interrupting me So annoying Albert it, okay, so I see Albert sometimes when I'm walking my dog, Basil the Boxer. And Albert is always... First off, Basil will go to his backyard and just stare in through the fence. And I'm always, Basil, come on, let's go. Let's, don't bother them. Let's go. And then I hear Albert's little chihuahua. Her, 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 the tiniest fits in my hand. I've actually posted a picture of Albert's little dog, Lola. And... Then Albert comes out Mike Mike come over here And he's 77 and we walk, I walk in And he talks about All kinds of funny things Happening to him And he's a sculptor He sculpts stuff In his backyard And then his wife Comes out And gives my dog A bunch of treats And then Albert brings out the, uh, A Dutch oven Like this Dutch uh, I don't understand Dutch ovens I'm not gonna go Into Dutch ovens I don't understand Why they're called Dutch I don't know the whole history, but they they kind of freak me out. At any rate, he comes out and there's these huge chunks of pork. (laughs) And and he goes, have one, Mike. And he gives me a fork. I'm like, okay. So I stab it with my steely knife and I just can't kill the beast. And I take a piece of the pork and I, and I take a bite. And pork is, (sighs) pork is an interesting thing. Okay. Bacon, right. Uh, Pigs are cute animals. I've often thought about maybe I should own a pig. But they're also messy and they're... There's a lot of pigs. And we eat pigs. And I've eaten pigs my whole life. And it's sad. It's, we call it pork to make it less like we're eating pig. We're eating pork. And the... the it's just... It's so dry. And he had done all these things. All the stuff to his pork to make it taste better. He... Marinated it in wine and vinegar, and he added all the seasoning to it. And it was just dry. 
Me want to cough and gag and die. So I, my point is, I, I don't think I'm going to buy pork anymore. I already don't buy milk. I don't buy milk. I stopped buying milk about four years ago, and I immediately felt so much better. I used to have, though I, I'm basically lactose intolerant, so I stopped buying milk, cheese, because cheese is just fat, and I stopped buying eggs because I, I just make too much eggs. I was uh, uh, basically, what was I doing with the eggs? I'd cook it like over easy or under easy or over the off the or over under whatever and which I never understood all those so I don't understand pork and I don't understand eggs so I just don't understand I understand chicken I know you got your thigh and your breast and your breast and your breast and I'm a little bit of a breast man and wings there's wings too at the legs Uh, I don't ever eat the head don't ever eat the head of the chicken I don't know why just a thing with me, I guess, or the eyeballs, but, but okay. So, and I usually go with the, the, the skinless, boneless thing. Where was I going with this? Though, no. yeah, and I'm not a big fan of chicken, really. I'm, I'm less of a fan of pork. And then don't even get me started with the cow. With the cow, we're getting to it now. A whole other area. So I'm slowly becoming a vegetarian, I think, is what, what it is. I was talking to a friend of mine last night at this Easter thing, Easter's thing, and I go, so are you and your husband vegans yet? And she goes, some of the time, except when we go and eat out. And I think that's what it comes down to is we go out and, oh, they prepare meat in all kinds of delicious ways. So you're going to eat meat then, but it's kind of hard to, when you're at home, it's easier, I guess. You can just... You're, you're lazy. It's easy to. It's so easy to just make a salad. Making a salad, you just throw a couple things on a plate and put maybe a little dressing. You're done. But okay, my point is his pork was super dry, and I was gagging. And then he gives me this. It's called puncha. I've been saying Porsche all this time. It's puncha. It's like you're saying punch, and it's a Portuguese thing. And he's Portuguese. His wife is. And we do this little toast. It's whiskey with a little bit of lemon juice and honey is what it is. And we do a toast, say chin chin. And that was my, uh, what was that? Saturday was what that was. A wonderful Saturday visiting. Uh, It was like about 7 o'clock at night and the sun's still up. I love the sun up late, don't you? This is sort of a rambling show. We We haven't even got to the show yet. We haven't even got to the characters that are stopping by. Let's say hi to them. Hello, Michael Matthew. It's Madame Rudabega. I've been waiting here forever to say something. Oh, but I didn't want to interrupt you. Thank you, Madame Rudabega. That's very nice. Whatever. Made me wait forever. I hate you. She hates me. Look who else is here. Hello, dear Mike. This is Valentino, the parking attendant. And this is Bison Bentley. Do you know that? Mike, we've been waiting too, but you know, we don't care because we don't really have anything to say, D. Yeah, nothing to say. Do you know that? Come on, you can do better than that. All right, guess the damn characters. I, speaking of characters, work with on my weekend job. I do not understand, and this is probably going to turn into something a little later on today. I'm probably going to get a bunch of emails blame mails it's the monday blame game my part-time job some of the part-time jobbers could care less i had to it was six i work from noon to six and at six o'clock i'm out of there at six o'clock i ain't hanging around if you're showing up late fine you show up late but you you're not cutting into my time i'm out especially since this is the type of place where the, you, even though they have this electronic way of checking in and of, of checking in and out, yeah, you know, when you punch in and out, they have an electronic way of doing it, but they still rely on the paper. Can you like still write down on a piece of paper what your hours are? And you know, and, and round it up. So you start at noon and, and you leave at six. Well, actually I started at 1130 and left at 630. No, 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 just put, you know, noon to six. Okay. 
And I'm so it's six o'clock and I'm out of there because I'm going there's an Easter thing and I don't know if you know this or not, but Easter celebrations, Easter parties, Easter lunches are Easter lunches. They start at two or three and they're done by six. So I had to get out of there and get to my destination by 6.15 at the latest or I wasn't going to see anybody. And so I had to leave. I couldn't hang around. I had to go. So I go. I get to my destination at 6.15. I see some people. They leave by 6.30. So I, at least I got to see them for 15 minutes. That's how my life is. The life of a frustrated radio person that spent all of his life working in radio and wants to keep doing it part time on the weekend. And I like my weekend job. I love the place that I work at. It's just the people that I work with can be real I, forgetful. Like I find out when I wake up this morning, I get, I'm get i looking at my texts. And I had gotten texted, but I was asleep by the time I got the text. By the guy that was supposed to be there at 6 going, What? I'm supposed to come in today? I didn't know I was supposed to come in tonight. That's not my problem. That is not my problem. That I'm not the guy... That comes up with the schedule I am not the guy that runs the company I am not In any way You're not my responsibility You forgetful twit So that's what I got with Last night Or this morning when I woke up He actually forgot to come in Well In today's world Radio stations run themselves I'm actually at a radio station now And there's I'm looking at the computer screen Where the radio station is running itself and part of my job is to make sure that things are running. I'm sort of the, what do you call it, the, the clock keeper. I keep an eye on Big Ben that it keeps running. Tick tock, tick tock, tick tock. What? I'm the clock mechanism man. I am here to watch it. We didn't know anybody was here. That's all right. I'm always standing in the corner watching to make sure everything runs. Like it's supposed to. On time. And that's what radio has become. But Alina Polyakova is beautiful and she will never have a job like that because she's much better than that. $45 million is what that Markle, Meghan Markle, the Prince Harry wedding thing. It's going to be $45 million. And have you been to a mall lately? It's, there's nothing going Malls are Okay we got one Actually near where I work Part time And there's a lot of Activity going on In there And there really Aren't any empty stores It's But here we are We're very close To Silicon Valley And it's This place is Is still doing Really well When I moved here Eight years ago It was bad We were in The economic downturn And There were places Closing up But nothing like where I used to live in Huntsville, Alabama, where the the mall was like. And then I found out after I moved that they just demolished the, the mall. Leveled it. But the one here, they're still running. What, what's it got in it? You know, it's got its Hot Topic and its Spencer's and its uh, Willem Sonoma and its... A couple Oh it's got a quickly I don't know if you have quickly where you are The boba tea And then they also make this blended uh, What's it called It's a Reese's peanut butter Blended shake That's out of this world I used to eat too many of them Too many And I cut it out They tried to launch a potato place Where it was nothing but potatoes But they charged you this crate It was expensive And it's just friggin potatoes Oh but the dipping sauce is expensive What? Well it went out of business Ha ha Gone So That didn't last So there's a big Actually that part is empty Where the potato place was In the mall So it'll be interesting to see what happens to the malls I got a bad feeling about it there are If you got Like Sears I don't know if you've been Into a Sears lately That's the most Depressing thing On the planet To walk into a Sears now And Oh there it is Yeah It's And the music That they play In a Sears Is usually Songs that sucked From the 90s That's the channel That they Are playing And it's bad 
I think we'll start the show now. Oh, the podcast picture today. Oh, I th- I think. Well, maybe something from Monterey. Shall we go with that? Something with Basil. There was a funny moment where I got a picture. I'll post it a little bit later on this week where a guy took a picture of me and Basil. But as we were standing there, all of a sudden a wave came and took my shoes away. I was able to retrieve them, but it just picked up my shoes. I'm like, wow, good thing I didn't have my something electronic down there. That would be useless now. The podcast picture will be of... So, no? Nah, I can't find anything. Oh, and then I got tar on my feet. I didn't know that was still a thing. That used to happen all the time in Santa Barbara. I got tar on my feet. That sucks. It's like, it never comes off. But you, apparently the, the trick is a little bit of oil. Like if you have any oil in the house, the little canola oil, you can wipe it off. I think we'll go with this cow at Fairmont Ridge. It's sitting by this tree, getting some shade. Yeah, that'll be the podcast picture today, because I really can't come up with anything else. All right, that's how it is. Darn, I thought it would be something a little more exciting, but... Or Basil meeting this really cute old English sheepdog. But (laughs) it's also got... The owner of this dog had some pretty nice legs. Should I put this in there? Do you want to see her hot legs? Nah, that feels a little creepy. I think we'll go with the cow. That's not creepy. Uh, Okay, the podcast picture to... Oh, so that was the podcast picture. On to the story. Stephen Bochco has died. He created the Hill Street Blues. He did, let's see. NYPD Blue, LA Law. Doogie Howser, that was one of his shows. He passed away, he was 74. Uh, and what did he die of? Did it say? No. Okay. Uh, then in Kentucky, a half century after getting divorced, a Kentucky couple is going to get married. Yes. Harold Holland, who's 83, and Lillian Barnes, who's 78. They're getting, they're going to exchange wedding vows on April 14th. Their grandson will perform the ceremony. At a local Baptist church You know that happens a little more often than not People getting remarried after being divorced for years Eh, Let's give it another try China hits back at Trump It slaps new tariffs on US goods worth up to 3 billion dollars The trade spat and the war of words continues That should affect stocks today unfortunately uh, and that's in response to our slapping duties on Chinese aluminum and steel. And then uh, at Mar- Mar-a-Lago, at a three-night stay where Trump was over the weekend, he had a parade of allies, many on the Fox News payroll. Um, he had a lot of people on Saturday, Janine Pirro. As previously rankled some senior White House aides for her ardent views on the Russia investigation led up to a burst of tweet. Uh, I cannot understand this story at all, is basically what it says. But it's saying that Trump is hearing from immigration hardliners. And Coulter, too? No. Oh. Piro and Hannity. Oh, Sean Hannity was there? Who cares? You know, it's sort of like this world that we live in where everything revolves around Trump, and we need to stop that. We need to revolve our world around things that are positive and good and full of light instead of this guy. Wrong. It's it's becoming a mess. And so I will try my best to avoid this guy. I inherited a mess. It's a mess. That being said, Kellyanne Conway is the number one leaker in the White House, according to a new book. Uh, Who's this guy? Ronald Kessler, the author of the Trump White House, Changing the Rules of the Game. Okay. As we go outside a cafe anyway, we're bringing Mike's Daily Podcast somewhere in Podcaster Valley. 
We got to a lot of interesting topics today, I would say. We got to a cow. Uh, the, and, and we were praising cows. That I was watching, as I often do at my part-time job, the Travel Channel. And basically on Sunday afternoons, Saturday afternoons, they just replay the same Food Paradise shows that they've been showing over and over and over again for years now. I think some of these episodes are at least eight years old. And they go to these steak places. They always show food that's bad for you. And th- this one place, they're serving steaks. And everybody that the camera... They- so they put the camera on people, consumers, consuming, patrons of the restaurant, eating these steaks. And they're like big, really overweight. And they're eating steak. And they're like, this is the best steak I've ever eaten. <gasps> it's just it's juicy and delicious. And you're looking at them and you're, and you're, okay, this was eight years ago. This person more than likely is probably dead or, you know, not doing, or on the, you know, they're not eating very healthy. These steak eaters. I come here every day. It's just not the best food for you. The red meat and all that. Okay. Wow. This is such a pro vegetarian show today. Pro vegan. Hey, we might as well just call this show Michael Stipe. Which, by the way, he looks weird now. He looks really... He's still a brilliant man, but I was watching a thing on the... Uh, what was the... Automatic for the People. They've remastered it and all this stuff. And, and Michael Stipe was... Yeah, so when I wrote Man, man on the Moon, I was friends with Kurt Cobain at the time. And Kurt and I had a, a challenge going on, a competition about who could put more yas in a song. And I won... Here's a little song for the never believer. Yeah, 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 yeah. There are a lot of yeah, yeah, yeah songs. It's a great song. I love it. Man in the Moon. I know it's got a, gotten overplayed, but pretty interesting lyrics. You can't dispute that. Very bizarre lyrics. And the video is pretty funny. It's all black and white, and he's walking through the desert, and he walks into this bar, this roadhouse, somewhere in the middle of nowhere, and... All of a sudden, the people are all singing the lyrics. Old people are singing the lyrics to the song. It's interesting. Hey, baby, are we having fun? And if you believe this is the end of the show, you are correct. Next show, Shelly Shuhart, Floyd the Floorman, and John Deere the Engineer. Mike's Daily Podcast is written and produced and performed by Mike Matthews. His podcast is super easy to find. Download or listen to his show and read his blog at mikesdailypodcast.com. Email Mike now at mikesdailypodcast at gmail.com. See you tomorrow. Bye.